Today, we are excited to share Sony's latest firmware updates for the Venice and the FX9. Let's start off by looking at the FX9, as Sony are adding some seriously awesome things to this camera. When Sony released the FX9 last year, they promised a lot of specs that were coming to the FX9, but no timeline for when we could get our hands on them. Well, today's update will be hitting end users' hands in October this year. Sony will be unlocking the FX9 to finally shoot full frame 4K, 50 and 60p with oversampling with an image sensor scan size of around 5K or 83% of the sensor. In DCI that works out to use roughly 29.62 by 15.62 millimeters of the sensor with a resolution of 4,987 by 2,630 and in 16 by 9 it uses roughly 27.77 mil by 15.62 with a resolution of 4,675 by 2,630. When compared to the existing 4K imaging modes, you are using a little bit less of the sensor, but it's pretty close. It's great to see, and I'm very excited to see how the footage looks in this mode. Sony will also be unlocking the 16-bit raw output while using the XTCA-FX9. I'm really excited to test this so we can really see how this sensor performs. Let us know what cameras you want to see it compared to when we manage to shoot some tests with the new firmware. Atos haven't updated us with any information about how this is going to work with their Neon series, but we can't wait to shoot some proper tests. DCI 4K is also being added. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this, so it's awesome to see it finally come into the camera. You will also be able to capture 180 frames per second 4HD using the full sensor. They added HDR shooting function with hybrid log gamma and increased the upper limit of gain settings. They have also added 3D LUT support. However, this is still slightly limited. You have the ability to import 3D LUTs onto the FX9's internal memory from your SD card and store up to 16 at a time. The information we have is limited, but from what we've been told, you will be able to use the LUT in your viewfinder as well as outputting it. However, this is limited to only when you're shooting in 4K and not in HD. I really want Sony to go into a bit more detail about how this is working, but I'm sure that will happen closer to the release. The camera is also seeing a huge update in the autofocus department. As Sony promised, they are now adding eye autofocus and have added the ability to bind the transition speed and subject shift sensitivity to your assignable function buttons so you can control them on the fly, which is so much faster than going into the menu system. There were also rumors that the screen included with the FX9 was in fact a touchscreen. And yes, this is correct. Sony will be adding touch autofocus as well as touch operation of the status screens. Both of these implementations of touch control are most welcome. I'm really excited to see how the FX9's fantastic autofocus works with touch-based AF. The status screen control looks limited, but that's not strictly a bad thing, as I couldn't imagine using the touch screen to operate Sony's current menu and UI design. However, the status menu has been designed with touch control in mind, so this should work well. On top of all of this, they've also added support for 6G SDI, support for the DWX, which is the digital wireless audio receiver with the XECA FX9, support for the XLR K3M digital interface mode, and they have made it so when you're using cinema series lenses, such as their new 16-35, your iris is displayed to say T-stop instead of F. All of these exciting new features will be released in October this year and will be free of charge. Sony have also released a range of updates for the Venice. This includes increasing the base frame rates of a few different formats. Of course, the addition of these extra frame rates is awesome, and it's great to see for Sony squeezing more out of this camera. Sony have also enabled gyro info in the metadata. This is an interesting addition, and I've asked Sony a couple of questions about it. Does it mean that we can use the same Catalyst Browse stabilization feature that the FX9 can use with the correct lenses? And is this available only in MXF or XOCN as well? They are also adding support for Fujinon's implementation of extended metadata. With this, Sony also introduced the art file. This is a new file type looking at changing the way LUT files work in the camera's pipeline. Our understanding of this is limited, but Sony have said there are a few advantages of using these files. Art files reproduce a better image quality by using all available signal processor modules and optimized settings for each of them. They know the input gamut and log for the look and always reproduce the correct look. If you use a cube, for example, that's slog3 slash sgamma3.cine, when the camera is set to slog3 slash sgamma3, for example, the look is going to be incorrect. You are also now able to use your user LUTs with the DVF EL200 viewfinder as well. They've added a few other small additions to the software as well. You can now add a second user frame line, 
They've introduced 9x16 and 1x1 preset markers. The record beep and alarm volume can be individually adjusted. Display Genlock and Timecode Lock status on the OSD and toggle D-Squeeze on and off with the user button. All of these additions and changes have been driven by user feedback, so thank you to all of the Sony Venice users for voicing your ideas and opinions. This update for Venice will be released in November of this year and it will be free of charge. We are really excited to get our hands on the new firmware and can't wait to fully test the cameras. Let us know in the comments what feature you're most looking forward to. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.